Do you? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming today. I feel extremely honored and I'm excited to be the first person to welcome you to Twitter HQ and to also kick off this amazing week with the Small Business Administration where we're celebrating small businesses across the US. My name is Anne Mercogliano and I head up the uh, Small and Medium Business Marketing Group here at Twitter and I will also be your MC for today. I am extremely excited to let you guys know that we have a wonderful pan uh, set of events that is going on today. The other thing that I wanted to call out for just a few housekeeping is that we'd love to have everyone who's joining us live here in person as well as everyone who's live streaming um, and joining us across the US join the conversation with us. So we have our hashtag which is SBW2014 and please join in on the conversation throughout the panel share your thoughts, ask questions, and we welcome you to the, the community that we're making today. The other thing is that we will be taking uh, photos and video through, um, throughout the day, and we encourage you to guys do the same and to post there. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Twitter's president of Global Revenue, Adam Bain, who will be kicking off the event for today. Thanks, Anne. Actually, I'm going to do my obligatory tweet real quick. So if everybody can just say, cheese, one, two, three. Cheese. Thank you. You can follow me at, at Adam Bain. And that was just tweeted out. So good morning. Uh, we're really excited to uh, host the kickoff event for this year's Small Business uh, Week with the US Small Business Administration. You know, Small businesses have been part of Twitter since day one. One of the first set of follows or set, first set of accounts that were ever created on the platform uh, was, a, was a small business. And we're extremely proud to be and honored to be working with the US Small Business Administration. Um, since 1953, it's been a trusted resource in providing assistance to small businesses in a variety of areas, including loans, government contracts, and counseling sessions. With the SBA's comprehensive network of resources and expertise, we know that by working together, we'll be able to reach even more small businesses and help them leverage the power of social media. So today, we brought together leaders from small business, government, high technology communities uh, to all raise awareness uh, for small biz across the nation. And it's a pleasure to have such a great lineup of, of distinguished speakers, including our neighbor from a short walk away, Mayor Ed Lee, the new SBA administrator, Maria Contreras-Sweet, Democrat House Leader and Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, the president of Kiva, Primal Shah, who will be giving today's keynote, uh, and an expert panel of businesses, including representatives from Sight Class Coffee, 10Xer, Bespoken Communications and Score, and of course, the sweat guru, although we've turned the, the heat down here a little bit, so there may not be too much sweating for a little bit. Uh, and finally, a really close friend of Twitter and founder of Make a Stand Lemonade, Vivian Har. So we hope that you will not only draw inspiration from these speakers, but also uncover new tactics to apply uh, to the growth of your own businesses. Um, Twitter recognizes the tremendous value of small businesses uh, and recognizes the value that they bring to our economy. In fact, small businesses are a very key part of our platform, and we're constantly impressed by the creative high-impact work that you all do on the platform. We've seen you launch new products and exclusive offers that excite followers while impacting your business's top line. We've seen you build a relevant and highly engaged follower base that provides real-time feedback. We've seen p uh, businesses share business stories through vivid photos and videos that bring to life the dedication to community. And we've also seen you uh, use Twitter to drive passion for social causes uh, back into your business that continues to give back. At the same time, he recognizes that building a business has challenges, um, especially in an increasingly competitive market. And so Twitter would like to help you stand out and differentiate your products and services to the market. We also would like to help you engage in real-time conversations with consumers that drive tangible business outcomes. And we also want to help you drive more awareness and traffic to any of your website, blogs, or events. Uh, we also e want to easily tap into the connective uh, collective ingenuity of small businesses to share insights and practices worldwide. 
So through free resources like the ones we offer today, webinars, guides, videos, research insights, and the like, we're really invested in continuing to help small businesses learn new marketing tactics that can generate real results. And finally, we'd like to say thank, thank you to all of you for giving us continued feedback and support as we build out our small business initiatives. Uh, please keep the feedback coming. We read every single tweet and email that we get, and it's helping us to improve our products in a pretty big way. So next, we're honored to welcome our neighbor and friend of Twitter, the 43rd mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, Ed Lee. Mayor Lee has been a tireless champion for small businesses throughout his tenure. Please join me in welcoming Ed. Thank you, Adam. Good morning, everybody. Happy 51st National Small Business Week here in San Francisco, right at the Twitter in mid-market in San Francisco. Well, let me all welcome you, and uh, it's really wonderful to join uh, our administrator, uh, Maria Contreras Sweet, as well as, of course, not only a friend, but a great leader, leader Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much for being with us. You know, you, we can easily call Small Business Week all over the country, but particularly in San Francisco, we could easily call it Jobs Week. And because small business has been such a great engine for our San Francisco community and all of you who are here, whether you're a small a business owner or a neighborhood leader, you all know uh, that in San Francisco, we have uh, such a great engine of small businesses throughout all the different neighborhoods. But in mid-market in particular, I think, I think back when I was walking in here again, and every time I look across and see that dome, uh, I don't get a chance to see the dome very much. You know, I'm inside of it all the time. But I remind myself... Uh, when Board President David Chu and when Supervisor Kim and I got together and we were thinking through this mid-market, we, we were thinking jobs all along the way. And it's been a wonderful uh, blessing to see these jobs get created right along mid-market. What we didn't realize, I think, was how technology was going to help so many other small businesses create that foundation as well. And you're seeing it more and more, whether it's uh, people using uh, their tweets to communicate with their customers or right a, a block away, less than a block away, you've got Square helping uh, people uh, with uh, their uh, cash and their financial aspects of their businesses. Or you, you see companies, small companies like ShopScene where you're going to get a lot of your inventory online all in the same place. Small businesses are also connecting up with technology in a very, very great way, and I love seeing that. And more and more, the benefits of that, the benefits of having a single portal for everybody to use in the city to start their businesses, uh, sites that make it easier for folks not to have to stand in line at some agency to get permits, uh, but can get it done 24-7, those are things that are right around the corner that we're going to be contributing, because that's what supports 65,000 small businesses in San Francisco that I know Regina always reminds me that supports 230,000 jobs in San Francisco. That's wonderful. And then we're not stopping there. Everything's not necessary online, too. In San Francisco, we know and we value our neighborhoods. In fact, I'm a pretty strong neighborhoods kind of guy, and this has been something that I've cherished ever since I swept every alleyway picked up trash on, on streets throughout the neighborhoods as public works director. I've loved our neighborhoods. I've loved how small businesses literally strengthen those neighborhoods, especially when the economy has been down. They sacrificed their own monies. Now they're going to get some help. And in fact, they're getting a lot of help from our invested in neighborhoods, something that I learned from Mark Quinn and small business uh, regions for many years when I was the purchasers that we've got to invest in our small businesses in order for them not only to survive, but to succeed and be great partners in all of our neighborhoods. And so you'll see invest in neighborhoods, investing in uh, facade improvements and signage, those things that sometimes have to be taken out of small business pocket uh, in order to survive. Well, these are times when our revenues are up and we're targeting 
uh, small business throughout the neighborhoods to make sure they've got that support. We're using loans and we're using grants in order to help businesses deal with their compliance with ADA so that these fly-by lawsuits don't really happen, but that people can be in full compliance with ADA. We're linking them up with all kinds of good information. Uh, when SF Travel comes in with these huge conventions, now we're talking about buy local. Even more and more, things that you make, things that you do can be connected up with world-class conventions that are coming into town. These are the things that we get excited about, we're doing, and we're doing it with the modern technology that uh, Twitter and Square and all the other companies are offering. These are really exciting times, and there are times, too, when I can look a child in the eye like we did, uh, several thousand of them this past Saturday, and say, want a job? How about 7,000 jobs this summer for kids in San Francisco? We're also uh, putting more and more emphasis on SF Made, our local manufacturing. There's so much to do there, and we're excited because in and of themselves, they're bringing in, SF Made companies are bringing in over $395 million to our city. They're employing over 4,000 people. And so uh, you're going to find more and more of our efforts to support SF Made. Local manufacturing is really, when you connect that with technology, with investing neighborhoods, you're going to have a pretty exciting city and continues to be. You know, I also want to say something about uh, our special small businesses. There are times when <clears throat> I said earlier that technology is of great help. Well, today uh, we have some special uh, guests of ours that I I feel very strongly about um, a little pizzeria called Mozzeria or Mozzeria is here in San Francisco. And you'd never think that people with the challenges they have could start their own business. But right here in San Francisco, utilizing technology, uh, Melody and Russ Stein created their own restaurant. And they are people who are deaf. And in fact, all their employees are deaf. So how is it that they can then use technology to communicate, make reservations, uh, have their uh, customers order online? All of that is being done with the use of technology. What I, I'd like to ask, Russ and Melody, would you please stand up and take a recognition for your wonderful, wonderful efforts here in San Francisco? We're communicating uh, all over about our work that we're doing. We're investing in the right way. These are things that I've seen over and over again uh, get sponsored when uh, Administrator uh, Maria Sweet, Conchera Sweet, was at the state of California. She did wonderful things for the state, and that's why she was so recognized. Now I get to say that she's 30 days into her new job, and we really want to welcome her as the SBA Administrator. But I also learned a lot from Leader Pelosi as well. She constantly is investing in our region, our state. She's a wonderful leader. And I, I just want to say I'm proud to be with them. I'm proud that we have such a great city of entrepreneurs, of doers, people who are going to say, OK, when we have challenging times, we innovate our way forward. We link ourselves. We make ourselves stronger because of our ingenuity. This is the spirit of San Francisco. I'm so proud of all of you in celebrating the 51st Small Business National Recognition of Small Business Week. Congratulations. Have a great time. We'll see you at Square tonight. Thank you so much, Mayor Lee. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce Maria Conchera Sweet, the leader of the U.S. Small Business Administration. Maria was sworn in by Vice President Biden as the 24th SBA Administrator last month. She is a successful entrepreneur, corporate executive, and public servant. Maria started three different businesses in Los Angeles. One of those was a community bank where she provided capital and counseling to small businesses. And she's been a small business lender as well as a small business leader. This is not Maria's first leadership position in the public sector. Here in California, as Mayor Lee mentioned, she served as State Cabinet Secretary overseeing transportation, housing, and business. 
Today, Maria advocates for America's small businesses as a member of President Obama's cabinet. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage the SBA Administrator, Maria Contreras Sweet. This is much too much fun. Thank you for that generous, generous uh, introduction and for the gracious invitation to be with you here at Twitter. This is a wonderful place. Thank you so much. Thank you. But it's also nice to be in California, as was mentioned, my home. It's, although I love Washington, D.C., and I'm finding so much reward in the work that I'm doing and energizing, it's always wonderful to be back home in California. So thank you for this gracious hospitality. Thank you to Mayor Lee and our incredible partners at Twist Twitter for hosting us here today. Uh, thank you to Adam for being such a gracious host. And now I officially kick off National Small Business Week of 2014. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, good friends and family, we're delighted that who's in the house well, who's in the house is the Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi with us here today. We all know that Leader Pelosi never stops fighting for America's small businesses. Thank you again, Ms. Pelosi, for so ardently championing our small business community. We're also honored today to welcome America's youngest and most inspiring entrepreneurs. Vivian Haar of Marin County, California is only 10 years old. In 2012, however, she saw a heartbreaking photo of two enslaved brothers in Nepal with rocks strapped across their backs. So Vivian decided to take action. She set up a lemonade stand every day for the better part of a year to raise money to eradicate slavery, child slavery. With her Twitter account, she raised more than $100,000 in the end. In doing so, she showed us how social media can turn a lemonade stand into an instrument of social change. Congratulations, Vivian. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> so today, her lemonade stand, called Make a Stand, is bottled at stores, at grocery stores like Whole Foods. Her business is dedicated to creating a better world. Vivian's brashness and business savvy is a call to action to every entrepreneur to think about ways in which they can do well by doing good. In the social media age, consumers know what they're buying, and they reward those companies with a conscience. Thank you, Vivian, again, for taking a stand and making a stand. You'll also hear today from Pramal Shah, who founded Kiva, a social media vehicle that lets ordinary citizens make microloans to deliver things like clean water and economic opportunity to communities worldwide. Let's replicate the stories of success in this room. Whether you started a business to provide for your family, to satisfy an unfulfilled passion, or because you want to start a second act and be your own boss, you're strengthening America. Today, we commit a new to growing small businesses so we can help ourselves and help others fulfill the promise of America. With Vivian and Pramal as our inspiration today begins a week-long focus on the risk takers who make the wheels of the economy turn. America's 28 million small businesses create nearly two, two out of three new jobs in our economy, employing half of the private sector workforce. So you can't have a conversation about creating jobs and economic growth without talking about what is truly the lifeblood of our economy, our entrepreneurs. As President Obama said in his proclamation this week, declara de de declaring National Small Business Week, my Spanish accent gets in the way. <sighs> Small businesses represent an ideal at the heart of our nation's promise that with ingenuity and hard work, anyone can build a better life. President Obama passed 18 direct tax breaks into law for America's small businesses. I agree with him, however, we have so much more to do. The president is right when he said, we must protect tax credits that help small businesses hire and add incentives for paying workers for higher wages. 
We must ensure entrepreneurs, even those who are not rich, uh, to ensure that they have the resources to take their businesses to the next level. Because if we create a more level playing field, the best ideas will rise to the top. Opportunity will flourish and America will prosper. This week, we're celebrating small businesses and hosting events across the nation. Starting in San Francisco here in the shadows of the Golden Gate Bridge, then Kansas City tomorrow, an online event on Wednesday, Boston on Thursday, and finishing in our nation's capital, Washington, DC. All of our events, workshops, and panels will be live streamed at sba.gov. On Friday, we're gonna announce our National Small Business of the Year, so I hope that you'll stay tuned for that one to make sure that you're inspired if you aren't already. Today, I wanna to recognize our Northern California 2014 Small Business of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Iron Construction. Are you in the house? Thank you, thank you. I love when women go into non-traditional spaces. Very nice, an engineer, it's marvelous. This is a general contracting company that provides quality local jobs, and they're passionate about environmental stewardship. Last year, SBA financing allowed the opportunity for them to have the opportunity to purchase a 27,000 square foot building in Sunnyvale. It's LEED certified and powered partly by geothermal energy. Claudia Folsman and Dave Edgar are here today. Again, please stand and let us recognize you. My friends, do you believe that there's a federal agency supported by Democrats and Republicans? Do you believe that that agency actually exists somewhere in our federal government to help small business businesses succeed? Did you know that President Obama added a brand new seat at his cabinet table for someone whose entire job it is to make your job easier? I know, you're, it's hard to believe, but it's true. SBA is the name of the agency, and President Obama appointed me to that speed in his, seat in his cabinet so that we could recognize the critical role that you play each and every day. As we kick off National Small Business Week today, I want every small business owner in America to get to know your SBA. We want to be your partner. We're the best kind of partner, a silent, consultative partner that takes 0%. Our payoff is helping you build a successful business that creates jobs and put Americans back to work. Today, we're here in the Global Bay, in the Bay Area, the global capital of high technology and angel investors. Yes, there are angels outside of Silicon Valley too, however. The SBA has angels fanned out across every state in this country, and we're in the business of helping you get into business and succeed. We help you get capital on good terms to start or grow your business. Two, we counsel you about how to get your business plan in shape, how to take your company to the next level. Three, we do matchmaking so you can land contracts, government contracts, corporate contracts, or international export contracts. That's three C's, capital, consulting, and contracts. The three C's that benefit every business. If you have a small business or you want to start one, the SBA exists to help you succeed go to sba.gov and click on the local assistance button to find your angel. They have their wings. Their job is to help you get yours. Take your business to new heights. I started my first business more than 20 years ago, dare I say, leaving a good, safe corporate job in Los Angeles to start my own firm. It was both exhilarating and terrifying. The entrepreneurs out there know the feeling that I'm talking about. I named my firm the Contreras Seat Company. I know, okay, so that wasn't as flashy a name as some of your incredible startups here in this area. But my husband, Ray Sweet, well, he liked it because he tells everybody he made me sweet. I know, that's so bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember the first thing I decided 
uh, when I started my business was I thought I need a business card. Makes sense. But that meant I needed an office number, a telephone, a fax, a location, a website. And that, all of that, meant I needed um, to price it all out. So just like that, I had my first crash course on why small businesses need access to capital. In those early years, I worked a lot of late nights because I spent most of the daylight hours marketing my business. Does that sound familiar? Well, that left the evenings to do the actual work, the painful work of actually getting the work done. I wish that I had known then what I know now. Even now, after having started my own bank, I still didn't know about the full panoply of SBA services available. The SBA specializes in helping entrepreneurs with business planning, strategic networking. We open doors to customers in the public sector, in corporate supply chains, even to foreign buyers halfway around the world. Now you may ask, is this all too good to be true? The first C, capital. The SBA has supported more loans to our small businesses in the last five years than any other time in history. Our loan volume has totaled $146 billion since President Obama took office. That's more than the GDP of most countries, countries like Hungary or Vietnam. The second C, counseling. We provide mentorship, counseling, and strategic advice to more than one million small business owners every year. We have hundreds of small business development centers, women business centers, veterans outreach centers, and our very own Small Business Administration district offices. Our seasoned business executives with SCORE operate out of 800 locations in communities across every state in the union. They log more than a million hours every year because they want to give back they want to offer their knowledge and their experience to you. They do one-on-one -on -one counseling, or in some instances, they'll come right to your place of business. But whether you meet them in your home, at your business, one thing remains the same. Their counseling and mentoring services are free. On the third uh, C, contracts. We oversee the federal government's supply chain for small business. The U.S. is the largest buyer in the world. So some have a helpful uncle who helps them open a door. You now have Uncle Sam. The SBA helps small businesses do nearly $100 billion of business a year. We also help small businesses plug into the supply chain of the Fortune 1000 companies. So, some small firms that enter large corporate supply chains because they rev uh, increase their revenue by an average of 250%. The SBA can help you glo go global too. Last year, we counseled more than 15,000 entrepreneurs interested in exporting, and we shattered our record for export finance, supporting $3 billion in lending. Think about it, just for a moment. 95% of consumers live outside of this country's borders, but only 1% of our small businesses are selling to them right now. Talk about an untapped market. There's so much growth potential in our interconnected global economy. Over the last three decades, technology has transformed the business world, enabling international com commerce, and no one no one has benefited more than our small businesses. In 2014, small firms can reach out to customers with one smart click of a mouse. They can analyze data faster, conduct national recruiting searches from their laptop, communicate with potential customers across the globe. Technology means small businesses get, get into profitability faster. Social media companies have revolutionized the way companies emerge with their customers. As a former marketer, I can attest to the paradigm shift this medium represents. It used to take millions of dollars in ad buys for a small business to become a big one. Not anymore. Today, companies like Twitter can help entre entrepreneurs start real conversations with consumers to build customer loyalty. It's a different world in 2014. 
Entrepreneurs, in fact, can do their business in their pajamas. I recall when cookies and bites were about eating. Now all you need is a great idea, a marketable skill, and passion. We're going to be hosting workshops like live streamed at sba.gov all week long. We'll show you how to promote your business in the mobile and digital age, get counseling and capital. Finally, I would let the opportunity uh, go to make a little opportunity uh, to make a little startup news. Today, SBA is announcing a new competition for those who help seed organizations, and they are dedicated to helping startups go from zero to 60 in record time. These organizations are called growth accelerators. Some of you are asking, what is an accelerator? Well, raise your hand if you've ever seen the new HBO show, Silicon Valley. OK. So you know that house where the main character lives? OK. Well, that's not a growth accelerator, although they do have a lot of fun on that show. Accelerators actually provide physical infrastructure, such as a university incubator or a local nonprofit. They offer up space, mentoring, networking, business plan assistance, and sometimes startup capital, too. Throughout most of American history, it's been companies like Xerox, GM, or DuPont that served as our laboratories for innovation. They invented and produced game-changing technologies like the computer mouse or Teflon. But now small businesses, small businesses take the lead, outpacing the innovation rate of larger firms. There are hundreds of growth accelerators in communities across America, but most of them are concentrated on the coasts. We want to export the Silicon Valley model to communities in middle America, across the nation, in urban centers and rural communities. We want to seed new accelerators focused on key industries like clean energy, new accelerators focused on underserved communities, whether it's women, minorities, or veterans, or encore entrepreneurs. Today, the SBA announcing, is announcing a $2.5 million national competition to help these accelerators scale up and to help accelerators spring up. Those who apply will be eligible for $50,000 prizes. Winners can use that money for things like rent, office equipment, Wi-Fi connections, and whiteboards. We'll announce the prize winners this fall, so stay tuned again through sba.gov to learn more. Let me close now my comments. Let me uh, thank you so much again for being here at National Small Business Week, but I want to remind everyone about the three C's. If you need capital to grow, if you need counseling to plan, or you need contracts to expand your business, then look up your local SBA office. It doesn't matter if you're a restaurant, a consultant company, an e-commerce website, or the next big thing in high tech. The SBA is here for you. We want to be your angel. Give us a call or tweet me to keep the conversation going. I'm launching today. I'm launching today. MCS for biz. And so let's keep the conversation going through Twitter. Uh, and also, you know, to continue to use the hashtag SBW2014. Together, we'll grow our national economy. We'll grow your businesses and America along with it. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Administrator Gruncheras' speech. Um, up next, we have our Vice President of Public Policy, Colin Crow, who will be introducing our distinguished guest speaker. Thank you. I'd like to uh, start off by thanking again Administrator Contreras Sweet, uh, we're thrilled you're here, and uh, we're delighted to be able to host uh, uh, the kickoff this week uh, here today. So thank you for coming. I'd also like to um, spend, before I introduce uh, Leader Pelosi, just a minute to thank uh, Mayor Ed Lee again, because the mayor, along with Supervisor Board President 
David Chu, our local supervisor, Jane Kim, uh, came together to help create a climate that was conducive to investment here in the uh, mid-market tenderloin uh, area. And uh, what you see today is the palpable uh, effect of that uh, investment and that smart uh, public policy. And so not only are we getting the, the job creation and the, the uh, platform for innovation uh, that is here in, uh, in this building, uh, but it is, I think, provoking uh, a look by policymakers around the country that are now looking here uh, at these policies that the municipal leadership uh, put on the books as a showcase uh, for uh, other policymakers in other parts of the country. So uh, again, another uh, uh, applause for uh, Mayor Lee. Thank you very much for your efforts on that. I, um, before I came to Twitter, I spent um, uh, over 20 years on Capitol Hill as a House staffer uh, for uh, then Congressman uh, Ed Markey, now Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts. And uh, so I have had the ability to see uh, Leader Pelosi uh, up close, uh, and particularly on the issues that uh, I worked on, which were the issues on telecommunications and, and, uh, and internet policy. Uh, so it's with particular delight that I have the chance to introduce you uh, today. Um, uh, Leader Pelosi has represented San Francisco for over 26 years uh, in the U.S. Congress. She has led the House Democrats for a decade. Um, and even though uh, we are at a so-called small business uh, event uh, here at Twitter today, uh, Leader Pelosi knows that small business uh, doesn't mean small dreams. Uh, it means big dreams, big hopes, and big aspirations. Uh, but we also know that when it comes to business, at least in Washington, Leader Pelosi means business. Uh, she has been heralded uh, because of her leadership when, uh, 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 when Speaker uh, Norm Ornstein, who is a uh, well-known congressional scholar, uh, noted that the 111th Congress was one of the most productive Congresses in the history of Congress. And so that isn't something that you always hear said about a Congress. Uh, so uh, I think a, a round of applause for that kind of leadership that we see there. One of the things that if you look at uh, her career, she spent uh, and has been a leader on so many issues, but just to rattle off a few that are uh, quite notable for us here today. Uh, initiatives to make uh, college aid uh, more available, to make college more affordable. Uh, work on clean energy and a clean environment and uh, addressing climate change. Uh, lowering health care costs and providing consumers with a patient uh, bill of rights. Uh, her work on small business, uh, which I'm sure she'll elaborate on uh, in just a moment. Uh, but particularly her work uh, supporting laws uh, and efforts around uh, minority and women-owned uh, businesses, uh, small businesses. And then uh, something close uh, to um, uh, my heart, but also important to Twitter, and I'd suggest to small businesses everywhere, uh, she has been a real champion on a policy called net neutrality. And that policy is what has preserved the free and open internet and that policy of openness uh, on the internet has created perhaps the greatest equalizer of opportunity for small businesses to reach both local and world markets. Uh, and those policies are in play in Washington today. Uh, we're certainly hopeful that the Federal Communications Commission will get those policies right. Uh, but uh, we count on uh, Leader Pelosi to continue the strong leadership that she has provided thus far in making sure that net neutrality uh, stays on the books and is uh, a policy that small businesses and citizens can count on uh, for years to come. So with that, a big warm wel welcome to uh, Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Colin, for your very generous introduction. Thank you for the invitation to be here today. Thank all of you for your leadership to grow our economy in a way that promotes small business, women-owned business, minority-owned businesses, entrepreneurship in our great community of the San Francisco Bay Area. I want to acknowledge Mayor Ed Lee. You can tell by his comments here today and his ongoing leadership 
that he understands the interconnectivity of all of the issues that we're talking about here. He thinks entrepreneurially. He thinks entrepreneurially. So he saves a lot of time of leaping over some old notions for some, with some new ideas to get the job done. And because of him, we are gathered here today to have this conversation in the heart of San Francisco at Twitter. Thank you, Mayor Lee, for your great leadership. It's wonderful to be here with Administrator Maria Contreras-Sweet. She spelled out a great deal of what is happening at the federal level. I won't go back into that, as we say in the Congress. I associate myself with her remarks. But I will say a little bit about Congress's role in all of that. What you should know about the Administrator, we're proud of her for three reasons. One, she's a California, Californian. Two, she is a woman leader. And three, she is a Latino. She was the first Latina to be the head of a state agency, and a large one at that, and now the administrator at, at, at SBA. Uh, I had the privilege of talking to the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce, a, a conglomeration of mostly small business people in Washington. While I was speaking, I had a note passed to me that Administrator Contreras-Smith had been confirmed by the Senate unanimously unanimously. So that tells you the respect that she commands, not only in our state and the leadership of Governor Brown, but also nationally in the leadership of President Obama. Uh, I am so happy to be here with uh, the, your CEO, Dick Costello. And, and I've been an admirer of his entrepreneurship, his innovation, his business skills, and all the rest. But I didn't realize until this morning that one of, these, one of the reasons he's such a good communicator on all of these subjects is that he was with improv in an early time. Is, is that true? Could that be true? Well, that's what it said. <laughs> so again, all of these uh, talents coming together. I thank Colin uh, for his leadership with Senator, then Congressman, uh, Chairman Markey, uh, in taking the values and the public policy knowledge into the public, private sector public-private partnerships, that's how we are going to succeed, to understand the ramifications on both sides. And what a joy it is here to be with Premal Shah, whom we all look forward to hearing from in, our, in his keynote address. And uh, again, aren't we proud of Vivian Har? Is that such a remarkable story? Congratulations to her parents for instilling those values in her, and what a star she is. Mozzarella, can't wait to come to the restaurant, the pizzeria, and congratulations to you and also to Iron Construction for the work that you do, and to all of you. What's so important about us being here at Twitter is the following. I think that there's nothing more optimistic anybody can do than to start a small business. Do you agree? Maybe getting married. Maybe getting married, well, what do you think? Married, small business, but both of them right up there. <laughs> and where that comes together is yesterday I went to a, a florist to get some uh, flowers uh, for my daughters who are wonderful moms. Two of them are small business women. And when I was in there, the uh, proprietor said, thank you for supporting small business. It was so wonderful because of all that he had to do with all of these people in line on Sunday morning. Thank you for supporting small business. But of course, we always do in San Francisco because it's who we are. Now, as I go around and we make policy in Washington, D.C., we write bills, but we don't do it just from there. We listen to the community, to the small business people who tell us what they need. And I'll go into that in a moment, but first, in relationship to Twitter, I want to say this. One of the things that is a challenge to small business is survival, right? When you're starting, and the administrator talked about her first experience, survival. The next step is success. Glory, hallelujah, success. But what we always strive for is not just survival to, in order to succeed, is transformation, to take it to another place. And everybody here who's ever had a product now has infinitely more distribution because of social media, because of Twitter and others. That is transformational. 
That is transformational. The world can know. And at the same time, that whole idea of the exchange of ideas is really democratizing the economy. And thank you, Twitter, for your courage in places like Turkey to fight the fight for a democratic voice. When I say democratic, with a small d, the people's voice and all this. So it's all connected, as the mayor described, and as he talked about what happens here in our city and how things relate to each other, and as the secretary pronounced in terms of what's happening at the national level. And as you know, the president uh, uh, issued on Friday his proclamation. And it was, as the mayor said, it was, uh, oh, I have this secretary speech here, so I won't read that. <laughs> but it was the 51st, um, it's the 51st anniversary, but it was 50 years ago uh, that the uh, Small Business Week was established. And in his comments, the president said, uh, uh, small businesses are the lifeblood of our economy, employing half of our country's workforce, as the secretary mentioned, and creating nearly two out of every three new American jobs. During the National B Small Business Week, we renew our commitment to helping these vital enterprises to thrive. We thank you, President Obama, for that, but also for the policies uh, that you have initiated that go with it, many of them the secretary referenced. But I do want to say that one of the first things that the president did as president, in addition, the first thing was to sign the Lilly Ledbetter Act, uh, ending discrimination against women. But one of the first uh, major economic initiatives was the American, uh, ARA, American Re Reinvestment and Recovery Act. And in that uh, act, the SBA, thanks to the Recovery Act that the president signed his at, 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 uh, the SBA has supported over $93 billion in lending to more than 166,000 small businesses since 2009 when that bill passed and became the law. Uh, many of those business, and, and the Small Business Administration, much, much of this, of course, had to have uh, legislation, uh, congressional action, uh, much of it bipartisan not all of it. This SBA, this ARA bill was only Democratic votes, unfortunately. But many of the other initiatives. In the President's budget for this year, President Obama's budget request is for $710 million in appropriations for SBA, which, which includes $155 million in disaster relief. You have to know, when disaster strikes, the SBA is there not only for small businesses, but for homeowners. And again, all of that generates generates uh, uh, um, uh, success in the economy, progress in the economy. Whether it's SBIR, SBIC, small business loans to women and minority-owned businesses, SBA is there. But you have to take advantage of it. You have to take advantage of it. And that's why we're so proud of the SBA, our regional offices, uh, our, our um, uh, in, in California, because we, we, I mean, let's just be candid about this. This is the hotbed of entrepreneurship in America. Is that not right? Can we not take pride in that? As the secretary said, we want to be able to have, we want to be able to have centers of interest, entrepreneurship all over the country. But California has led the way. Now, I just want to close by saying, uh, again, our agenda is about keeping American jobs on our shores through empowering American businesses, national security. We should have many more small businesses, women and minority-owned businesses and small business participating in the contracting from our, uh, from our Department of Defense and the entire uh, federal government. Innovation, clean energy technology, the centerpiece of so much uh, of the um, businesses of tomorrow, competitiveness. What my small business people have said to me as I've gone around, and I, and I will close with this, they have said we need access to credit, we need a trained workforce, so we need investments in education, and we need customers. We need customers. And so the success of our entire economy is related to the success of our small businesses, 
And the success of our small businesses is related to the success of our card. And so in that vein, I want to announce to you uh, uh, our When Women Succeed, America Succeeds agenda. It's about women getting paid fairly, equal pay for equal work, entrepreneurship of women, women as employers as well as employees, women and starting their own businesses. It's about paid sick leave for women so, and men, and it's about a quality affordable child care to unleash the power of women in the workplace. When Women Succeed, America Succeeds is not just the title of our economic agenda for women and uh, families, it is an absolute fact. And did I say I was closing? One more thing. <laughs> One more thing. In March, it was uh, um, Women's History Month, and I invited uh, Janet Yellen, chairwoman of the Fed, Janet Yellen, the first woman to head any central bank in the world. Janet Yellen, appointed by President Obama. She came, and in her remarks, which were reported in the press, so I, I can say them here, she said, the economic growth of America in the 20th century owes a great deal to the involvement of women in the economy. The growth in the 20th century. Now, in this new century, we have to do much more. But all of it is related. All of it is related. So thank you to Twitter for the transformational impact you have had on small businesses, on our economy, on democratizing communication, as well as uh, uh, economic growth. Thank you, uh, Twitter, for having us all here today to hear the ideas and to listen uh, to our, our small business owners whose voices are what we learn. And, and much has been said about big business doing their number. Again, the entrepreneurship comes from the smaller businesses that can be more agile, adapt more quickly to new thinking and new ideas. So thank all of you for thinking entrepreneurially. Thank you for driving the energy of the American economy. And thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts with you today. Thank you all.